Now this is Radio TV Phono Nut, and today we have something a little bit unusual. This is a GE AM FM stereo radio from 1969, and when I say stereo, I, I mean it reproduces FM stereo broadcast. It's a solid state unit. It has some problems. The switches need to be cleaned. The tone control is damaged. It just spins all the way around, so that potentiometer will likely have to be replaced. And the filter capacitors are shot, as you can hear. I had some reception earlier, but let me play with these switches. Okay, so now I'm not getting anything, so let's just open it up and see if we can fix this. Here's the inside. This is our, our culprit right here, this cardboard tube filter capacitor. You'd have thought by 69 they would have stopped using those, especially in the solid state sets, but apparently not. This is also a line driven set, meaning it doesn't have a power transformer. We have high voltage on our audio output stages with these big dropping resistors that drop the voltage down for the signal stages. Now, like any other GE, they're always a pain in the butt to take apart. In fact, I think GE had people laying awake at, at night trying to figure out ways to make it difficult to get their products apart, and I'm sure this radio will be no exception. Okay, we have the chassis out, and the way you remove the chassis is first unsolder the leads going to the speakers, then you remove about a jig and screws, and then you unsnap the chassis from the plastic cabinet, and I also remove the dial scale, as you can see there, in case I need to get to this portion. But right now, let's unsolder this uh, defective filter capacitor and go ahead and get that out of the way. And here it is, a planet brand capacitor not known for longevity it's a hundred microfarad and a fifty microfarad both sections at 150 working volts our fifty microfarad is reading 6.4 microfarad let's see what the hundred reads and the hundred is reading let's just say 10 microfarad frankly I'm surprised this set wasn't humming louder than it was Okay, there they are on the board, and the next thing to address is cleaning the, cleaning the controls, and that'll be accomplished by spraying some control cleaner in each control, and then working the controller switch back and forth several times. And here's our busted tone control. Uh, that looks like that that was a result of possibly shipping damage, something or something that whacked it real hard. So we'll take that apart, and I will try to repair that control. I don't know if I'm going to be successful or not, but all we can do is try. Okay, here's our tone potentiometer removed from the chassis. Since it's a stereo dual channel set, there's actually two potentiometers mounted back to back here. So we're going to attempt to put all this back together and hope it works. Okay, we have it back together. I uh, sprayed some contact cleaner in it, and everything rotates as it should. Now, before we reinstall it, we'll connect an, an ohm meter and make sure it functions as it should. Okay, as it stands now, everything's working like it should, so, so we're ready to install the control back in the chassis. And before you get on me, most of the time these ganged potentiometers have the terminals on the same side. This GE set is not that way. So just wanted to clear that up before anybody gets on me about putting it back together wrong. Okay, we have the potentiometer reinstalled in the board. And now I think it'd be a good time to connect the speakers and see how it performs. Okay, we're back together and working. It's just great to listen to, especially that. Chaka Khan. 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 Chaka
to the newsmaker. Only on the Gallo Radio Show, the JT Show, and Head to Head, and only on 103.3 FM, Super Talk. Obviously, the FM oscillator is way out of alignment. That's 103, and we're coming in right just shy of 100. News Mississippi. 403 for News Mississippi. Some of the latest products at Golfsmith. And- you don't pay. Okay, back on the GE radio, and as you recall, the the biggest problem that we're now faced with is the the calibration of the FM dial is way off, and when that happens, that's usually something in the FM oscillator circuit. Now, let's take a look at the schematic diagram for this thing. Here's our FM oscillator circuit that consists of a transistor and some resistors and capacitors and then we have the oscillator coil here now this capacitor here is our variable tuning capacitor or one section of it and we have a 5.6 picofarad capacitor in parallel with it now most sets instead of having a fixed capacitor here they have a trimmer capacitor and that way if you need to adjust, make adjustments, you can just simply adjust the trimmer capacitor and that'll get you back where you need to be. So I don't know why GE chose to use a fixed capacitor in this application because dealing with FM, it's, it's very touchy. Any one of these other components could drift off ever so slightly and throw the alignment off. In fact, I could probably check all of these components with an ohm meter, and they would all probably check just fine. Or I say ohm meter, check the resistors with an ohm meter. I'd need a my capacitance meter to check the capacitors. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to replace this 5.6 picofarad capacitor with this variable trimmer capacitor that you see here. And that way I can adjust the set to where it needs to be. And then if it drifts off in the future, hopefully in the distant future, all I'll have to do is go back in and adjust this trimmer and bring it back into alignment. Here's the capacitor, a 5.6 picofarad. It measures 6.4 picofarad, but I don't really put a lot of stock in that because when you get down to values this low, it's it's very hard to get an accurate reading, especially on standard shop grade service equipment like what I have. But I'm not really worried about that. I'm going to install the variable trimmer in its place and adjust it to the correct 
frequency and hope it all works out. Okay, we have it back together and have the trimmer adjusted as good as I can get it. The dial is still not completely accurate. I had to compromise between getting the high end of the dial right and the low end of the dial right, which that's often a problem, but it's working pretty good now. That's 106.9. It's coming in yeah, a little bit off. That's the hard-to-receive hip-hop station. Not that I'd ever want to receive it. Um, for today's R&B and Old School Kiss 104.1, Kelly Price. Free call from C Spire. Now, the other thing you want to do is these nonplussed two people. Yeah, even the talk has moved its way to FM now. Coffee time. Coffee the band Perry on 970 KK. It ain't complicated. Well, I've grown to hate it. Whenever I ever called you in 22 years and told you I was coming home, <laughs> and then you said you uh, didn't, didn't call mine, and then you told me that I had to research is also legal. Um, you do know, um, right? Shout out! I, I didn't even see. I think they need to bump it up a little bit. They're a little weak. There's our tone control that we had to repair. It doesn't have much tonal range, but I can tell that the control is working. For, uh, for it might look like. Okay, there you go. That ought to, ought to wrap up the 1969 GE AM FM stereo radio. Thanks for watching and more to come later. <laughs>